Today we are going to learn importance of learning rules. When you are seeing classical games or strong players are winning against lower rated one, you will see weaker players, they break some chess principles. So when you see such examples and rules, you write them down. And the more you see rules related to that, you will improve strong conviction towards those rules. So constantly reading those rules will make sure next time when you see your opponent is breaking them, you'll be able to exploit it. So establishing all the rules and seeing many examples related to those rules are very important. We are going to see some of the rules. There is standard European opening. He played D5, D5 is not as good much sir. Because those days opening theory was not developed. I don't know if is a serious move. Castling, takes, and D5. So, this is a very interesting line, and white is a piece down. And you will learn king safety. Why king safety is very important, and why you should learn theory. If, you, if black plays here, the most obvious move to protect the knight, just check. This capture, check. And here you can pause the video and think how you will continue from white. The variations are really amazing. Check. Rook e5, idea is to admit like this. An id2 or knight g5. Both are equally good. Like this. Okay. This is me. This is like a, a small trap. And uh, if you play this move, then there is bishop g5. If you play knight e8 to protect this knight, then rook into e8. Takes and rook e1. Rook here. Rook e5. That's me. Don't stop it. So, so here, black should not be greedy and uh, he should return the material. And uh, whichever knight you take, another knight will come back and will activate the bishop. Black is better. Black played d5, it was not good. Okay, okay. Castling. And if you see, white is not caring about the pawn. I mean, he can't take it anyway because this bishop is so b3, queen b3 bishops are two bishops then bishop a3 will come and extreme for white is winning so he played bishop e6 and uh, pause the video and uh, find a good move for white here white played bishop g5 which was not good rook e1 was the best move it is a little bit, you know, not that easy move. You know, some sometimes you are afraid of uh, ghost. Like I will take knight into c3 or this is hanging for a long time. Not that easy move. I asked this position to many students and uh, many could not tell it. They said a different moves. So some suggested bishop g5, some suggested queen b3. None found rook e1. And after castling, it's knight g5 move. Pause this video and try to find a good move for white. Here, white best move is rook into e6. On into e6, knight into e6. And uh, suddenly this. Diagonal is extremely powerful. I mean, if you play bishop into c3, I can simply take knight to the Then I will take this bishop. White is simply pawn up and double bishop advantage. So, I mean, if you take this, then knight is pawn. White is completely winning. So, rook e1 was the best move. It's like, you know, maintaining tension, this position. I'm not releasing any tension. 
This is a beautiful example related to maintain tension. Here, white plate bishop g5. Seven, eight, eight. Pause the video and find a good move for white. Here, correct move is rook e1. Because if black manages to castle, then white will have isolated pawn. And in chess, what all pawn structures are bad? Isolated pawn, doubled pawn, backward pawn, pawn island. Huh. In some positions, isolated pawn is okay. When there are a lot of pieces on the board, there is a rule in isolated pawn position. You should have many pieces. You should not exchange pieces when you have isolated pawn. White has very few. So if black manages to castle successfully, then white d4 pawn will be a serious weakness. So here, this. This position, white to play, pause the video and think. In this position, white knight on f3 is badly placed. It's not doing much, actually. This e5 square is controlled, g5 square is controlled. White rook is actually doing not much. I mean, if I play moves like rook c3, we'll play king f7, rook e3, I'll play knight d5, then I'll play rook h e8. Plug is more than fine. You can't activate knight. And if if it is black to play, black will simply play king of seven, rook e8, knight d5. Even black can fight for small advantage. There is something called short term advantage, long term advantage. When you are attacking opponent king, it is short term advantage. If you, if the initiative part, if you don't deliver it precisely, that initiative part you will lose very quickly. What is long-term advantage? Something like material when you are up. That is long-term advantage. But right now, if you don't hurry, your advantage will disappear. D5. So what White is trying to say here by playing this move, that for me, material is not that important. Attack initiative is more important than material. Peace activity is more important than material. Knight d4. And now, just imagine this position, the rook, is, the rook as well as the knight are not doing much. But after d5, this knight is, this is a weakness. This rook is very active. Queen, this rook as well, knight as well. All white pieces are perfectly placed. And if you see, in the contrary, look at these two rooks. And uh, white king, black king is in the center. Black played king of seven. The idea is very simple. He wants to, if he can exchange some pair of rooks, then this is good for black. First, he played rook x. C8, he wants to exchange. And it is all about, if you miss one move, if you play one careless move, all the advantage will disappear. Let queen g4. This position, pause the video and think, find a good move for white. Here, white played uh, knight g5 check, in e8. From this position up to end, you try to think and find everything. You should find black's best move also. You should see intermediate move, everything. If you are missing black's best move, it is not good. Here, white's best move is rook into e7. If queen takes, then rook into c8 is there. And if you take king into, then there is this check. If king goes to d8, then knight e6 and knight c5. Black will lose his queen. And if king comes to here, then there is queen b4 check. To go here and rook e6. Queen takes, takes, black will lose queen. And if you play moves like this, check. It's a mate. 
you can't play king e7. So king f8 is the move. If you missed king f8 move, it is not that good. So here the best move for white is rook f7 check. Now pause the video if you haven't seen this. The best move is rooks g7. The queen cannot take because of rook and c8. King cannot take because of queen to d7. If you play here, then knight under d7 is there. King to g7, queen to d7. If you go here, let's check. King h8 and rook into h7. Again, queen cannot take because of rook into c8. King comes here. And queen b1. So this is a very nice game related to initiative and short-term advantage, long-term advantage. Why you should not keep the king in the center for so long. Why castling is very important. We know all the rules, but only when we see such examples, we will understand why strong player made these rules. So we are going to see another game. This is the famous Ivan's Gambit. And let me tell you, we are not seeing this game for opening purpose. I'm trying to teach you a certain concept of chess. And uh, here, this is a very interesting idea. You should know whenever e5, there is a d5 idea. And this is black is clearly better. Even though it looks like black in castle is disturbed, but this idea is there. Black is clearly better. E c3, we should play three. And uh, just look at the activity. Objectively, black is fine in this position. Huh? But you will see the power of double bishop. And here, if you are black, which move you should play? Here, black played bad move f5. What is the rule? When opponent has double bishop, or you have double bishop. You should open up the position. But now white is having double bishop advantage. So you should not open up the position. So f5 is a bad move. Black concept of chess, not that clear. You should not even consider such move. Okay. A big mistake. White played f4. Black is actually helping white. And you can see the power of these two bishops now. Rook A1. Pause the video and try to find a good move for white. Here, white plays is amazing tactics. White, all pieces are perfectly well placed, and uh, generally, tactics will flow. Pause the video and try to find a good idea for white. Took this. This is very surprising. I mean, I was expecting this thing. White is also clearly better after this, but uh, this was really surprising. F6, and suddenly if you move your queen, F7, there is a mate. This, I mean, irrespective of what you do, F7 is mate is there. We will see another example now. There is a rule, right? You should do early castling. King safety is the most important thing. And now white is not at all worried. So first he gave b4 sacrifice, then d4 pawn. Now it is e5 pawn. White is sacrificing. It's just to make sure black king is in the center. White is trying to open up the position. And you try to exploit king's vulnerability. Okay. And he took this. Okay. And tactics is flowing. This is completely winning for white. I will show this part very quickly. Because if you take this and queen e4 check, queen e1 is falling. Yes. 
and uh, there is a rule, right? When opposite color bishop is there, the one who is attacking, but here white is completely winning. That rule is irrelevant, but the meat is very beautiful. Let's check. I think that. Check. And uh, whenever you are attacking, you should look at forcing moves. This is a very important rule. Okay. Check. Okay, now let's move to the next example. So bishop b6. Okay, this is not a good move at all. Bd4, d6. And look, there is a rule, right? You should not move same piece again and again. And here black broke that principles. First you played bishop c5, bishop into b4, bishop a5, now bishop b6. This was really unnecessary. I told few minutes back, knight of six is a good move. Bishop b6, cd4. So when opponent is a breaking principle, what you should do? You should try to exploit, or you should try to punish him. You should try to open up the position whenever opponent king is in the center. So e5 is a good move. Okay. Pause the video and find a nice move. Is bishop a3. So here, white is not bothered at all about pawn. White is how many pawns down? Five versus seven. Two pawns down, and the third pawn is falling right now. So there's queen b3. We need to take bishop f7, queen e6, mate is there. We protected it. Spawn. Okay, so now let's go to the next game. And the white is just one pawn down, but just look at the piece activity. But, I mean, black pieces are completely disorganized. Right? It's King Cannot Castle. There is a reason you should learn opening. This, all these games which I'm showing, this is before 1900. Opening theories were not that developed. And uh, you can understand how much people suffered because of that. You should learn opening to organize your pieces harmoniously, develop your pieces systematically. Hmm. F4 takes takes. There is a rule. Opposite color bishop, the one who is attacking, it feels like he's a piece up. Because this guy is like, even if he's there, but it feels like he's dead only. So we just open up the position, he's like two rooks down. Okay. This is two point. And you can look at this position, pause the video and try to find a nice idea. White that F5. Doesn't bother about the rook first. If you take this, then there is a good one check. King comes to here, it's a mate. So, I mean, very close to me. There's White's main strategy is to open up the position, and the king will get the real trouble. Okay, so, the rest part is today. White okay. okay, let's go to the next example. The bishop. To be honest, I really like bishop e7. And if you play d4, knight a5, and it is up to you to analyze all this and uh, to know all the truth. So study it. Bishop c5, I don't like. D4 takes. And there is a rule. Whenever your king is in the center, you should not open up the position. Here, black played d5. Now you can understand this is a bad move. Takes, takes. Bishop h. Preventing black king from going this side. Pause the video and try to find a good idea. White played here d5. 
doesn't bother at all about pawn. He's two pawns down, but it doesn't matter. Take. White has double bishop advantage. Take. Check. And this is a serious trouble. Take. Okay, I even rook and seven is complete to me. I mean, discover attack is not possible because of this move. Is there? It's you are not winning queen, but okay, you are anyway clearly better. I mean, I d four. White is clearly dominating because you cannot play queen d seven because of my check is there. Huh? But he first played rook uh, b one, queen a six. Those days they were giving lot of importance to material. This game was played in eighteen forty nine. Why it is Paul Murphy? Okay, check here. Yeah. Check. Yeah. That's amazing. 